everybody, Jill here. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this video on the real truth about wearing wigs. Now, by no means do I want to toss out and throw a bunch of negative things at you if you're contemplating being a wig wearer for whatever reason, could be health issues, whatever. No, 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 that, that is not my intention at all in this video. What I'm hoping is that you will hear some of these things. These are my bugaboos. Not all of them are negative, but they're just kind of the way it is. You know, it's just, it's just happens when you wear wigs. And I, I know that it wouldn't, sh it wouldn't have made me not want to try wigs if I would have known these things in the beginning, but it would have been nice to know because then I would feel more like, oh, this isn't just me. <laughs> I'm, this is just like a lot of people are experiencing these same things. It's just part of being a wig wearer. That's really, I hope you find it helpful. And I don't want to scare anyone away that may be for whatever your, your own personal reasons are to explore wearing wigs. And many of you may have landed here on this video doing just that. Um, no, I, I love being a wig wearer. I also wear toppers and hair pieces sometimes more in the summer because I find wigs to be quite warm. Um, and that's something I'll be talking about actually in this video. So let's get started on some of these. I have my phone here because I jotted them down. I wanted to keep myself, you know, not veering off too much. So um, these again, I want to reiterate, these are this is my experience and I really can only talk to you about my experience. In my experience, I want to tell you <laughs> that you are never going to not feel like you're wearing a wig. There are wig caps that are quite comfortable, but it's all in the spectrum. You know, it's all in the, as you wear a lot of different wigs and you, you wear them for a long period of time through the day, or you just, wear different types of wigs so they, they have different wig cap features you will learn what feels comfortable to you and what doesn't feel so comfortable to you but you're still going to feel like you have a wig on your head so you know you may hear even me sometimes say i forgot i actually had a wig on today i don't actually know if i've ever said that but um or it was so comfortable i didn't even think about taking it off until late at night that happens, yes, but I still have something on my head. After all, you know, we are covering our entire head with something, you know, and you are always going to feel like you have something on your head because you do. You're essentially wearing a hat and sometimes quite a warm hat, um, depending again on those cap features, but you're always going to know you have a wig on your head. There are things that you tend to get used to. So you get used to them and they kind of fall away, you know, um, and you get used to certain sensations. So you don't, you tend as you wear them longer, you, they, they are in the forefront so much. They kind of are just sort of hanging out in the background. So as you get used to that, you can let those kind of fade away. And yes, you get used to wearing them, but you're still always going to know you're not going to forget that you have a wig on your head because it is wearing a hat. You're wearing a hat all day. So I just wanted to let you know that because you may hear, you know, like I, I literally just don't feel this on my head. I don't know how that's possible, but you know, again, there are some caps that in within brands that are more comfortable than others for sure. I mean, you will learn as you start experimenting in different brands and even within the same brand, but with different styles and different cap features. Again, you will get to know which features that you can deal with and then features that you really love because they're more comfortable that's something over time that you have to experience yourself. Synthetic wigs, whether they're HD, which are which means heat friendly fibers, you can take a little heat to them. They tend to be more realistic in the way they look and the way they feel and even in the way they move. Um, but I wanna say synthetic wigs 
are never going to behave like your real hair. It's just not going to happen. If you are wanting to explore more human hair varieties in wigs, yes, you're going to have a more realistic feel and experience. It's going to be more realistic because it's human hair. I'll do a different video on kind of the pros and cons, I think, of going with the human hair. I mean, cost is obviously the biggest factor, I think, for most of us, but, but there are other pros and cons to both of those. But regarding synthetic fibers on both, again, thinking about the heat-friendly ones and then the regular synthetic non-HD, non-heat-friendly fibers, you're just not going to have that, that same experience that you would if you just had a full head of your own natural hair. Um, again, though, the trade-off is amazing. Really, every day you're going to have a good hair day with a wig and they're not the synthetic wigs are not going to be affected by humidity. It's not going to be affected by the rain even. It's, it's wonderful. Um, and that was one of the ones I have on my list actually is you are going to have a great hair day every day with wigs. And that is a positive thing, obviously. But I have that on my list because that is awesome. I mean, that is not underrated it at all. Um, I love wearing makeup. I love taking the time and putting on my face. And, um, you know, before I discovered wigs, I struggled with my hair and I never could eventually get my hair to do anything nice that I wanted it to do. Um, and what I envisioned I wanted, it just became nearly impossible, if not 100% impossible, actually. So it kind of, you know, I didn't ever let my hair establish the mood I'd be in that day. It wasn't, I, I just didn't do that. But I have to say, part of the appeal for wigs for me, if not entirely the appeal, was to have something I could put on and I had gorgeous hair, you know? And after struggling so long with my own hair and as it thinned and thinned more and more, um, that was so exciting. And I think that is the motivation and that is why we all kind of put up with a lot of the things on this list because you have this gorgeous hair that you don't have to worry about when it comes to, you know, how it looks in the style and, you know, you can decide, I want this style today, I want this color today. You can't do that on a daily basis with regular hair. You know, the color thing, I mean, if I want to be really super light, almost platinum blonde, I can do that that day. If I want something more like this, you know, a kind of a warm, pretty blonde with pretty highlights, I can grab that wig. Um, you know, and style-wise, they're fantastic. I can go on and on about what attracted me to being a wig wearer, but I want to stick to my list because I will make an hour and a half video in no time. I'm going to say flat out, now there are, there are different variances within this statement, but I want to tell you that all wigs are warm. Now, again, on a scale, there are wigs that are going to be very warm and then wigs that you can tolerate more when you are in a warmer climate or you just run warm like me, <laughs> you know, um, you may be having hot flashes, whatever, and you run warm and you sweat a lot. So I just want to say all wigs are warm. You're not going to put a wig on your head and it's, you know, the, and you're going to feel like you again have nothing on and you're going to, you know, feel the breeze on your scalp and no, no, I'm sorry. It's just not out there. Now, again, there are variances. There are machine wefted caps that are going to allow a little more circulation, but it's nothing like not wearing anything. And, you know, the shorter styles, they're going to allow the wind to get here in the nape and kind of cool you off that way. Definitely. Um, and, you know, they even can be machine wefted here on the crown in, in the top here to allow a little bit of um, circulation there. But nothing, nothing like wearing nothing at all, for sure. 
you know and then there are caps like I'm wearing today it was a completely closed cap with a lot of permatease you know that basically is um, a wearing a wool cap and there's not going to be any circulation going on and this type of cap is going to be very warm then it kind of comes in handy because it does keep me warm everybody else may be you know really chilly but you know here i am with basically a nice wool cap on and you know i'm doing great just for comfort in general because when i get warm i tend to itch more and i you know you sweat and all of that so i am fortunate enough where i have enough hair where i can wear toppers and i and i discovered those two summers ago and now over this summer i pretty much only wear my toppers every now and then if i'm going to an event or i just feel like i just want that full head of hair you know because toppers are kind of a different experience altogether you know and it gives you a whole different kind of look but for me it's all about the comfort in the summer but i miss wearing my wigs in the summer i really do and now that the weather is changing i'm so happy to be wearing my wigs again um so yes i'm just going to tell you that I don't care what the wig is, it's going to be warm. Something else across the board as you wear wigs, and you're going to notice it when you get the first one on, the flyaways. What are flyaways? They're all those little stray hairs. I mean, this one you cannot almost see all of the little flyaways, um, but they get in your face. And, the, you know, they're, they're not like the, the real hair where you can tame them you can a little bit with product like this you know this is hairspray for synthetic fibers um, and you you can this this helps but nothing gets rid of it totally it's just something you end up having to get used to but I have to say I've never completely got used to it I don't know any wig wearer who has everybody will tell you across the board that they are annoying some people if it's very persistent they'll take it and they'll just pull it out you know it's like that fiber is never gonna behave itself I'm just gonna just pull it out uh, you know that happens for me I do that sometimes as well if it's just like one of those that's just never going to behave but otherwise I use product product for synthetic fibers and you know spraying some of this hairspray a little bit kind of telling them okay behave those little flyaways different styles are going to do them uh do that a little more and it's going to be more bothersome obviously you know uh, a-line bobs that kind of come to the face those flyaways will probably be driving you nuts for a bit um, they do tame i think too the more you wear it and and i think for me the more product every single time i put a little hairspray on my wigs or something it helps um, but for instance, I have an Ignite wig, which is quite a short wig. I have one in particular that is just terrible with the flyaways. And I usually don't have too much of a problem with my Ignite wigs for that reason. You know, I don't have too many issues with flyaways, but I got one. It is terrible. I don't know. I don't know what it is about it, but it, it really gives me a lot of annoying flyaways. So that's going to be i don't care what the brand is i don't care what the fibers are like that's something you just have to deal with as a wig wearer some okay something else too that you need to know is that when you wear synthetic wigs you have to use synthetic product on them and synthetic styling aids don't always behave like you what you're used to on your own human hair and, the, and those sort of products that you're used to what, using um, I know it took me a couple different times to hit on a hairspray that works pretty well kind of more like a traditional hairspray for synthetic fibers um, and that's this one the beauty mark a style and hold and I'm I, this is my second bottle and I need to order another and I think for the sake of helping uh, you guys too and, and I'm curious as well I'm gonna go ahead and try a different brand next time and see if I can yet find something I like even more so <laughs> that is frustrating it is frustrating I have to say um, they, they're meant to come out we don't want to gum up our synthetic wigs you know I highly recommend recommend not using uh, products that aren't meant 
for synthetic fibers. You're running the risk of gumming up your fibers on your wigs and then not being able to get them out when you wash your wigs. You just don't want that to happen. You know, these are investments. A lot of these wigs are not inexpensive and you want them to last as long as you possibly can. And taking that risk of using non-friendly products on your wigs that are you know not made for your synthetic fibers is taking a risk so that is up to you i have never been brave enough to do that and uh, i i just don't like taking that chance i will say 95 percent of the time your wig will never look nice right out of the box so i think a lot of people think you can take a wig out shake it out, stick it on your head, and it looks fabulous. I have not had that experience myself, but maybe just a few times, very, very few and far between will that happen. And even then, I'm still gonna use my little fill-in powder to make my, you know, my hairline look better um, and some product and whatnot. But there are, times when yes there are literally shake and go wigs that you don't have to fuss with hardly at all and they look great i don't want you to think that doesn't happen but i want to say the majority of the time you're going to take a wig out of the box it's going to have box hair it's going to have to settle down um, and it's not going to look great right out of the box it's not sometimes going to even look good right out of the box so Keep that in mind. Uh, don't get disheartened if when you get your first wig and you put it on your head and you're like, what does, what's happening? Um, that's very, very, very common and it's, it's just the way it is. So along those lines, don't be afraid to make that wig your own by taking it to a stylist, putting in a little bang if you're comfortable with that, having it razored and thinned or have a little more face framing layers. You know, I think that if you're not comfortable doing that yourself, um, definitely seek out someone who is comfortable because again, you know, that wig is made for the masses, but you want it to look like you, and you may have to do a little something something to get that to happen and to make it feel like you, so you will reach for that wig and feel good in it when you put it on your head. Sometimes you're going to come to the conclusion that you're not allowed to really style your wigs. They're just too delicate, or it's not necessary, or you just are afraid to do it. That is, in my opinion, a fallacy. I think you absolutely should not be afraid to style your wig. And that doesn't mean taking heat or anything to it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with properly, carefully getting those fibers off the cap, putting some product in it, putting, you know, um, accessories, headbands, pretty clips, things that maybe you have not been able to ever utilize in your own hair for years, if ever, have fun and get in there and style that wig once you got it on your head and have fun. You have a beautiful head of hair. Don't be afraid to use hairspray made for synthetic fibers. Um, and, uh, you know, just cute little things. You know, I have this headband in here. Um, I, I love being able to add things to my wigs because it's fun. I have not been able to, you know, do anything like this ever actually with my own hair, but, um, it's fun. So yeah, absolutely. Get in there, you know, and, and have fun styling your wigs. Heat friendly fibers, you got to be a little bit more careful. They're very delicate. You don't want to go crazy with them, but absolutely they're meant, you can put hairspray, you can put things like this, you can break them up, get your wide tooth comb, you know, your wide tooth pick or your wide tooth comb, break up the fibers, fluff it up, tuck it, whatever. Absolutely. You can style wigs. Something I had, I had no idea is that synthetic fibers are going to sort of start breaking down. They're going to stick together as the day goes on, especially your, your heat friendly fibers. They're going to do that much, much quicker. Um, any friction that happens with the fibers, 
they're eventually going to start sticking together. So they may start here, but as you move your head or they, they you know, brush up against your clothing, um, they are gonna start sticking. They're gonna start sticking together. So you're gonna get this weird kind of clumpiness going on. And even the fibers that you have, you know, and it depends on the style, depends how short your hair is, um, the style and, and, and all of that. But eventually, sometimes, if not most of the time, you may have some product in there and I recommend doing that because it will actually help the fibers kind of stay there a little longer through the day. But um, it'll start kind of falling on itself, you know, just, just general um, gravity itself is just gonna kind of start falling on itself. And so you may, you know, as, a, if you, as you've worn it for a few hours in the day, you'll look in the mirror and be like, oh my gosh, I look like I have a helmet on. It's okay, it's gonna happen. You'll have probably, depending on it, on the length of your wig, you'll have some clumping, where if you move your head, the whole thing kind of moves. And you'll also start getting tangles, especially in the nape area. So every couple hours, sometimes every hour, it depends on the style, you may have to reach in your desk at work, grab your wide tooth comb, and just kind of work out run it through the fibers, freshen it up, get those stuck fibers out and it will revive it, give it a little bit of movement and it'll look better. So really, I had no idea you had to do that with synthetic wigs, especially your HD fibers, but in general, synthetic fibers will do that too. So you have to freshen it up through the day, kind of release that friction clumping and it will look fresh and have some movement again. You know, one of the telltale signs that it's time to wash your wig is that that's going to happen and then it's just happens so quickly. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I, I'm gonna have to do something about this. Um, you know, and, and so as your wigs do that though, they will break down. The fibers will start breaking down. They'll get fuzzy um, and kind of that little bit of a, a frizz. They'll lose their movement and that happens that happens uh, quicker than I think you think it will. Um, I know I was pretty astounded at how long a wig will last me, even the ones that cost me quite an arm and a leg. Um, again, I thought, oh, this is gonna last me forever if I take care of it. <laughs> I had no idea, you guys. I had no idea. Never, ever, ever, you know, had a wig in my life. I had no idea. I just thought they lasted forever. No, they do not. So I recommend getting a few wigs that you really like, and it may take some hit and misses to do that, and rotate them. So you're not wearing the same one every day because, and then you'll learn, well, this is my fancy one. I'll, I'll save this one for like a little, like going out to dinner. This is my work wig. I'm gonna wear this one eight to 10 hours a day, but then I'm gonna have an alternate so I don't have to wear that one every single day. You know, you're gonna learn all of that. But um, anyway, let's, let's move on. I've done an entire video on this very thing, but I had to talk about it and I had to put it on this, on this list. Um, you will never find the one. You know, you are, you're never, you're never gonna find the one, that one wig that defines the perfect experience for you, the perfect color, the perfect hair, the one, the one that looks really good on you and you feel like it was made for you and it's just your hair. I mean, we have our favorites, you know, Ignite is my favorite wig. I have styles that I think I really love and I do, but I don't think I ever actually got my head in that space of wanting to find the one. But lots of people are trying to find that one perfect wig. And I just kind of want to detour you, you from getting in that headspace to begin with, because I think it's going to be a battle you're never going to win. And it's going to you know, rather than embracing each and every little sort of style um, and color for that matter, I think you're better off not even going there and just um, having fun wearing 
you know, different brands, different styles, different colors. And if you're somebody that wants to stick really close to your natural hair, that's all right. You know, and you want to stick to a, a style that, that you have worn in the past or whatever, that's okay too. Just don't get in that headspace where you're looking for that perfect one because I really don't think you're ever going to find it. And then you're going to lose, I think, the the focus on really how fun this little wig journey can be and kind of going outside the box sometimes with either hair color or styles that you actually may look fantastic in, but you never would go there. Um, so keep an open mind. I think that's the thing is just keep an open mind and I think you're going to enjoy it so much more. So along those lines, and I've said this just recently in, in my most recent wig chat, is you just have to roll with it. Being a wig wearer, you really do have to kind of have that, I'm just gonna roll with this. Don't let it get you down if you happen to just not like and or love your last wig choice. Um, you know, it's just, you just gotta roll with it. Uh, if you hate it, definitely return it. Otherwise, you know, make it work. You can put something in it to make it look cute. Put a headband in it, whatever. Um, you know, you order two styles and they're not even behaving the same way. That's very common. Um, you just gotta roll with it. You just gotta have an open mind. Don't let it get you down, you know, and, and just kinda go with it. And I think if you have that kind of personality or you can just tell yourself, okay, you know, this wig thing, you know, it, it's different. It's not what I thought it would be. It generally is never going to be what you thought it would be. I hope that's what this video helps you with is just really to let you know that these are things you're going to be dealing with as a wig wearer. And, uh, again, I think the positives for me, it, they definitely outweigh all of these all of them because I love having pretty cute hair all the time, you know? And I love having my makeup done and then plopping on a style and finishing out my look. You know, it's fun and I love having hair. Love it. I've had fine thin hair my whole life, you know, and I love having different hairstyles and I like being able to switch up my colors sometimes. It's fun. I love watching TV or a movie and think, oh my gosh, I love her hair. And then think, oh my gosh, I actually have a wig almost exactly like it. I can have her hair and I'm gonna wear it tomorrow. That's awesome. <laughs> so if you're contemplating wearing wigs or if you're a seasoned wig wearer, hang in there. We all go through ups and downs with our wig journey and we all have days where we feel a little bit more insecure than others. That's okay, that's normal absolutely natural. It's gonna happen. But I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.